The eyes of political pundits are on the federal seat of Dunkley, southeast of Melbourne. Here, cost of living pressures loom large. I mean, you're sort of worried about what the future's going to be like. You go to the shop with, uh, with uh, about $800, but you bring a little things. I got six children, but uh, it's so difficult. Hey, Voters in the Dunkley by-election head to the polls on Saturday. Every vote matters. How are you? Nice to meet you. As the popularity of the major parties is put to the test. <laughs> Thank you. This uh, electorate is going to send a message to the anti-Albanese Labour government on March 2nd. I've worked in the community sector for a long time for the most vulnerable groups within our community and have a strong passion for empowering people. Dunkley is a by-election in the government seat. It's a seat which, despite its 6% margin, would normally be more marginal. It's a seat the government needs to hold because if it loses the seat, there'll be questions asked about its performance. The seat became vacant after the death of Labor MP Peter Murphy, who lost her battle with cancer in December. The MP's pick to replace her was community and welfare advocate Jodie Bellier. I've got big shoes to fill and I hear that every day and to continue to lean into her legacy and extend on her good work and um, be a politician for the people. Thanks, Thank you. Frankston Mayor and Liberal candidate Nathan Conroy is trying to convince the electorate it's time for change. Mortgage relief right now, uh, interest rate reduction right now, cost of living relief right now is what people need. Dunkley is an electorate of haves and have-nots, from the more affluent voters of Mount Eliza to the traditionally more working-class people of Frankston and families in the newer housing estates of Langwarren and Carrum Downs. While there's been much talk in Canberra about Labor's Stage 3 tax cuts and broken promises... We are giving a tax Order, cut members on my to left. some 13.6 million Australian taxpayers. On the ground, the message doesn't seem to be cutting through. Have you thought much about the Stage 3 tax cuts? Will that influence your vote at all? To be quite honest, I don't have much information on it. I just do what happens. It's one of the seats the Liberal Party's been talking about trying to do better in. It's, it's also a little odd, it's very high in the proportion of renters, it's lower in the proportion of people who are, are buying houses and paying mortgages. So, given you've got so many renters, a lot of those people and, and people on lower incomes are really struggling with cost of living and some of those um, tax cuts may not be quite as important to them. So, Murray, what fruit do you want? At this charity, there are long queues of people who can no longer afford to feed themselves. OK, no worries, Murray. They've given me today a beautiful roast pork, with veggies, pumpkin, peas, potato. Andre says politicians need to do more to help people like him doing it tough. Mental health issues is certainly a big issue down here in housing um, and perhaps we need a few more doctors I think. We need to hear more about the solutions you have in mind for these problems, cost of living, housing, medical issues. You just hold on, I'll give you your lunch here. Demand has definitely increased and we get a lot of people coming now who are just desperate to access any service available in Frankston like, yeah and a lot of desperation, yeah. Six minor parties are also vying for the seat of Dunkley, but there's been more talk about the outside influence of a conservative lobby group. Advance doesn't have a candidate in the race for Dunkley, but they're campaigning hard against Labor, telling voters to protest by putting the party last. But if the unpleasant experience of this billboard truck driver is anything to go by, Advance's message isn't being well received by all. It's just a job for me. And uh, I enjoy driving, that's the main point. But from time to time I get some, a lot of insults, a lot of threats, some uh, rude gestures. 
Has anybody been supportive of what's on the truck? Uh, very few of them. I think that's what actually happened. A very local campaign is gaining momentum in the Dunkley by-election. We're calling it the Cold Coast. One of the area's better-known residents, Reverend Tim Costello, is driving a push to stop Frankston becoming the next Gold Coast. So these are penthouses for multi-millionaires. What the housing we need is affordable housing. We're not backing a particular candidate. We're saying that uh, absolutely wrong for the Liberal candidate's mayor to wave it through. Equally wrong for the state Labor planning minister to actually approve it. This sort of development is vital for Frankston City. And I'm proud to be leading a city that has created the blueprint, the framework for a revitalised community. Jody Balliers also copped some criticism during the campaign for last year voicing her disappointment that the yes vote was defeated in the Indigenous Voice to Parliament referendum. 56% of voters in Dunkley voted no. I respect the decision and the results of the referendum. The Australian people have voted and I am focused on the future and the future of Dunkley. Up the road in the electorate's only Liberal stronghold of Mount Eliza, the Frankston Luxury Apartments were on the mind of this Nathan Conroy supporter. He thinks business, business is really important. The only downside with him is uh, he's going to build those big apartments. Okay, so that's about it, but I'll still vote for him because I think he's going to be better for the overall. But even in this wealthier suburb, voters are mostly concerned about the cost of living. Traders 7.30 spoke to have seen a drop-off in disposable income. So it's certainly tightened up and, and in response we've had to tighten up what we're spending on what stock we're bringing in. So it really is about you know being very aware of your customers and how you're managing your business. Which way are you going to vote? I haven't voted yet and I have made up my mind, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> By-elections like this get judged on whether the government holds or loses the seat. If the government holds the seat, there'll be some talk about the size of the swing, but in the end, if Labor holds the seat, everyone moves on. If Labor loses the seat, then it's a much bigger issue.